Ideas for immediate use. I want you to have something that you can turn around and use immediately and not worry about it. Okay, so here we go. Of the seven ideas, the first one is night at the museum. So you can see this young man uh, on the right. He's dressed up like Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the the originally, you know, the kids had to do the trifold board, but of course, everything can just be digital, or it can be a trifold board. That's fine. Um, and then they would record it. But here are some ways that you could institute Night at the Museum. Kids can become a book um, character or a story character, uh, clearly historic uh, people. Um, uh, when I was doing my uh, training for elementary, because I've taught elementary through high school, one of the activities that we did in a math uh, training course, methods course, was letting the kids become a number or become a function, you know, so I am, I'm a, a, a multiple, I multiply, right? Or I divide, and then they become it as a character, as a noun, right? Um, you could also have them become a part of speech and they have to be creative and show that they know what that part, part of speech is all about. What about if they become a part of a cell um, or a piece of technology or an element off the periodic chart? Um, so much more interesting than writing paragraphs that they copy out of, you know, um, off the internet now that they don't use encyclopedias, but um, so they could also become an animal or a geographic area or a biome, right? The more complex it is, the more fun they could have. And, you know, if they were to do a geographic area or a biome, then that might be a good opportunity for collaboration. So just some ideas for you. Uh, they could record from home or from school. If they don't have internet, um, you know, they could, they, they can record on any device um, and then just upload it to um, Flipgrid. So they don't necessarily have to have internet connection at home. Um, you can also use the QR codes to create a walkable museum. So once the kids um, are in there and they post their um, video, when you open up their video, there is a QR code button. And so then the teacher can hit the button, print them out, and you can place them around the room so that the kids actually walk up with their tablet or their iPad and they scan it and then they get to watch the presentation. Um, okay, so number two is reader response. So kids from a very young age have to retell a story. So the littles for sure could be practicing all the steps to retelling stories. You could also post a video inside Flipgrid and then ask the kids to respond to it. And if you use a certain um, protocol, then the kids get used to the thinking routine, okay? So if you're not familiar with um, thinking routines and protocols, definitely Google that. Um, you can also give them a criteria for what they need to say, you know, so you have to have three examples from the text or make sure you speak in complete sentences, you know, all those communication skills, speaking clearly, um, making sure you can be heard, enunciating, all those kinds of things. All right. The next one is to have an asynchronous debate or an opinion page. So you can uh, give the kids an article to read and then they can choose a side. You can assign a side, right? Uh, you can put them on teams and then you can, um, there are all kinds of things you could do. I've seen teachers do juries. Uh, they, they had a courtroom where they put somebody on trial. And so one of the kids would become the character. The other kids are, you know, the defense and the prosecution. And it is just so much fun. All right. So um, they can do Socratic seminars. And uh, what is super important whenever you have discussions is that you present the kids with sentence stems. And I do have a toolkit that I'm going to um, uh, share with you so that I've linked a lot of um, tools that you can use to help you apply some of these things. All right. Uh, just to save you some time. Okay, the next way that you can use Flipgrid is a show me. Now, there are so many things that kids can show you, right? 
show me that you understand, show me that you can apply the skill, show me where the supporting details are. So they could have a, uh, an article open uh, in Kami or some other PDF annotator, and they could actually be highlighting and they could be annotating and you can see them doing it live. Um, they also, if students uh, have done work on paper, right? Because I don't know about you, but I like doing math on paper. And so I could work it all out and then I can hold it up and I can explain it. So those are some different ways that, uh, that you can use it for the show me. You could also use it for the show me something that you have, that you can do that you're proud of. Uh, when I taught fourth and fifth grade, um, we, we used Friday afternoons for the kids to show us something that they were really good at. And I don't remember anything from fifth grade that I taught except for those Friday presentations. And probably the kids don't remember anything either, right? So you can use it for those kinds of, you know, show me, show me something I didn't teach you. You know, what have you learned on your own? All right. The next one is book reviews. Uh, everybody wants to know when you've got a good book, you want to like tell everybody. So what if you created a group inside uh, Flipgrid? And if you're not familiar with what I mean, the other, um, the other video explains it, but you can create a book for each genre. And then within that genre, you can have a topic for each book. So, you know, if I love, um, fantasy, then I'm going to find Harry Potter in there, Lord of the Rings, Aragon, you know, so, um, it will be very easy for me to be able to find, um, a book that I might be interested in. Right. Um, so one of the wonderful things about Flipgrid is they have a discovery section and I'll show you that at the end. Um, and I go over this in the other video, they have a discovery section where there are over 5,000 topics that have been listed that have been shared and you can filter them by, um, by subject, by grade level, and then by topic. So I found this on the right hand side. This is a, uh, an example of a book review topic. Somebody already set it up. All you have to do is copy it and it goes into your group that you select and you just have to assign it to the kids. So it couldn't be any easier. So there are over 5,000. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Go in there first, go see what you can discover and then start using the ones that are pre-made. After you build your confidence, right? Then share some of your brilliance out with the rest of the world. All right peer praise and celebrations so all work and no play makes jack a dull boy right so it is important for us to be building sel in our classrooms so why not have a peer praise moment where you allow the kids to notice what their peers are doing well and to announce it right so they can do it right in um right in flipgrid and I don't know about you, but if I, if somebody put something wonderful up about me, I would download that and save that forever. Right. And who wouldn't? So peer praise, you can use inside Flipgrid. You can do weekly celebrations. So things that you can include, um, you know, we, all, we have a lot of student of the week and student of the month, but what about when we do goals met and personal best, you know? growth is so important. And so I might not be the best in class, but I just beat my own personal best and that's worth celebrating. So these are just some, some ideas, right? Uh, jigsaw activities, right? These work wonderfully well in class. I think they might even work better in a flip grid because they split the work and then they come together and they share their learning and it's documented there. So even if I don't remember it, I can go back. And if somebody in a different group sees mine and I left something out, they can comment and add it at the end. So they're helping everybody in the class. So, you know, it's the, it's a, the whole idea of, you know, we're in this together. I have this Flipgrid toolkit for you. And in it, I've got linked sentence stems, 
ground rules for Socratic seminars, ideas for museums, uh, a video explaining how to retell a story, a book review topic that you can copy, and that's the same one that was in the presentation. And then I filtered book reviews, and there are over 5,000. So you can um, go to that link, and then you'll be able to filter filter them so that you can find what you need and then copy them. Uh, and then some living wax museum topics that you can copy. So from the ideas that I gave you, hopefully this toolkit will be uh, helpful. And what I'd like to do is, all right, so in order to get this Flipgrid toolkit, you just need to type in bit.ly slash flip underscore toolkit and make sure that you uppercase the F and the T because it is case sensitive. So that's where you can get the toolkit from. 